Hi, I'm Balraj and today we'll discuss the internal structure of the earth. This lecture will be helpful in IAS and a lot of other competitive exams. So, we can broadly say that the earth's internal structure can be subdivided into three basic parts, the crust, the mantle and the core and these can be further subdivided. The crust can be divided into the continental crust and the oceanic crust. The continental crust is thicker, it is about 35 kilometers thick, whereas the oceanic crust is thinner, it is about 10 kilometers thick. And below it is the mantle. The mantle can be divided into the upper mantle and the lower mantle. Between these two is the Mohorovic discontinuity and the mantle is basically made of peridotite which is an ultra basic rock and below the mantle is the core. Now core is further divisible into outer core which is in a liquid form and the inner core which is solid. The outer core is liquid because it has certain impurities and these impurities lower the melting point and moreover the pressure is also lesser as compared to the inner core. Both the inner and outer core are made up of nickel and iron. Now how do we know about this structure that we see? We know it with the help of the earthquake waves or the seismic waves and these waves help us understand it by the velocity they adopt and the travel path of these waves. Now these three wa they, uh, these waves can be primary waves, secondary waves and surface waves. The primary waves or the P waves are longitudinal waves or compressional waves. These waves can travel both in solid as well as liquids but their speed is lesser in liquids and higher in solids. They travel in the form of compressions and dilations. We can see this in the diagram also. This is the path of the movement of the wave. Whereas the S waves can travel only in solids. They cannot travel in liquids because liquids do not have sheer strength. And these S waves travel at right angle to the direction of the propagation of the wave. And the third kind of waves are the L waves or the surface waves. These are also called long period waves. These can travel only on the outer surface of the earth. Now we can understand it with the help of these diagrams. Here at the epicenter the waves are produced and the S waves travel but they stop at the outer core which is in a liquid state. This can be further understood in a different diagram. Here the S waves have gone through the crust and the mantle but stopped at the outer core whereas the P waves have passed through the outer core as well but they have suffered refraction. This refraction happens whenever a wave travels in a different density. So because the earth is made up of various layers and these layers have varying densities, we can see this in the diagram. So the waves continuously suffer refraction. On account of refraction they do not travel in a straight line. They adopt a curved path and because of refraction we also come across a phenomenon called the P wave shadow zone. Now shadow zone is a zone where there are no seismic waves and in the context of P waves shadow zone is between 105 to 140 degrees and this happens because of refraction in the liquid outer core whereas if you talk about the S waves the S waves cannot travel through the liquids. So since the outer core is in a liquid state, so the S waves cannot travel through the outer core and that's why we get a S wave shadow zone. Now, people have uh, used in the past different methods to understand the internal structure of the earth. People earlier used volcanic eruptions to understand the internal structure. People even suggested the use of meteorites which fall on the earth. But the use of seismic waves is the best method to understand the internal structure of the earth and it is also the most acceptable one. Thank you for watching my channel and for more videos please subscribe to my channel IS Preparation. Thank you.